Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to Jamie Photography. I'm going to do a short video this time. This is just about how I export my images from uh, Adobe Lightroom. Hopefully this will be helpful for you. I'm only going to show you what I do. I'm not going to go through every single option. Um, so let me let me get started here and, and show you how I manage uh, my images. So inside uh, Lightroom, this is an image from the, the last video that I did. Um, and as you can see, I've got two, two images in here. I've got the, the finished processed image and I've got the original image there. So I can select the images that I want to export. In this case, I'm going to select both. So I'm going to select number one, hold down the shift and select number two. So they're both they're both highlighted. I'm going to right click in the middle of one of them. Any, other, any one of them is fine and go to export and then in export menu, go to export. Now in here, uh, there are many options that you can use. You can set up presets, but what I normally do is I export to the hard drive. I export to a specific folder. Now you can click on that and you can pick destinations and places that you want to add, but I, I, I select a specific folder and then I will choose the actual folder that I want to use. So in this case, I will click on choose a folder and it will have my, in this case, is my Jamie photography uh, folder here. And I want to create a new folder and I'm going to call this Rotterdam Old Town 2 because I've already got one folder, but this is this is what I'm going to create. And then I click create and it will create a folder. There it is. And we're, in, we're inside that folder. So I can choose that now. OK, if I didn't want to use that, I could go back to choose again. I could put, go back to my root directory and I could pick a different I could pick a different one. But I'm going to pick the Rotterdam Old Town 2. So I'm going to choose that. Now you have a tick box to add, put in a subfolder. So you can you can select uh, put in a subfolder and then I'm going to write test. So what it's going to do is going to create a folder inside the new folder that I've just chosen. As you can see, it's selected there and, and that and, and with the subfolder selected called test. Sometimes I use catalogs, but generally not. But you can add to a catalog if you want to. Then what do you want to do with the existing file? Well, normally I ask to do uh, something specific with it. So I leave it on ask what to do. But you can choose a new name to export overwrite without warning or just skip this function. But I ask what to do. And then in the file naming section, you have a number of options here. You can you don't have to tick that. You can just leave it and it will it will leave leave the existing file name for you to copy over. But I tend to rename it. Um, you have a number of options in the pull down menu, uh, leaving it from the original file name or the date with the file name, etc. And a custom name. We see I just select custom name and then I will select uh, a, uh, a name for the actual images. So I'm going to call this Rotterdam Old, Old Town dash um, day to night. OK, so both these images are going to end up with the same name. But what will happen is Lightroom will automatically give the second one its own number. And if you had four or six or ten or more images, it would give its own number to each one of them. So each one would be unique. So there you go. That's the example um, that it's going to use, because at the moment I've got the file settings set as JPEG. OK, so I want to export as a JPEG so I can use it in my social media for my Facebook page or in my Instagram. You could select this and pick one of your own. Now, generally speaking, I only ever really use JPEG or DNG. I use DNG when I want to export the images as a usable raw file so that I can either use them in Lightroom or use them in the, in uh, another product uh, maybe Luminar as a raw as a raw when I export it that way you keep the original raw images inside Lightroom and you create a new raw image uh, to to use um, and you you have a number of um, selections you can pick here the compatibility you should always pick the latest compatibility You've got the size of the JPEG that 
it creates with it so that you, there's a preview effectively which means it opens easily and quickly when you want to view it you can use um, lossy compression and you can embed the original raw file if you want to I, I never do that in this case I'm going to export as a JPEG um, now the color space is the, 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 the science the color science that's being used and uh, Adobe RGB 1998 is is the one generally used by uh, Lightroom but I actually prefer sRGB slightly warmer um, and uh, in it, and it works for me so I tend to select that one then over on the right hand side you have uh, two two lines one is quality which we're currently set to 85 percent you can put it to 100 percent if you want to but what I find is it makes the file sizes uh, very large and I personally cannot see a difference between 85% and 100% so I save about 20% of the file size by moving it to 85% otherwise I could choose to limit the actual size of the image so if I'm making a, a, a thumbnail for example that, were, that I would use in Lightroom at the beginning of the video they require you to be less than two megabytes so in this case I would select 1800k and I would tick that box so it would limit the output size of this image to, to 1800. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with 85% quality on a JPEG. If you want to, you can click re resize to fit and you can select um, how big the image you want the image to be. So in this case, I could say on the long edge, I want 1080 okay, pixels. So it's a 1080p image if I do that with a resolution of 250 pixels per inch which is roughly what Apple's uh, retina displays are um, so you don't see the pixels at that resolution so you can select that you could you could select a different one you could choose the number of megapixels for example you'd like the image to be so you could select megapixels and say I want a 10 megapixel image and it will it will do that for you so either way you can decide the output that you use uh, from here but I'm not going to use that I'm going to use the JPEG quality at 85 percent you have a couple of other things here you have output sharpening so you can add sharpening well I never use that because if I want to sharpen the image I would sharpen it using the functions within Lightroom you can also add or remove a metadata again I don't tend to use metadata uh, too much so I tend to just ignore this one you can add a watermark some people like to have their their signature um, on on the actual image itself you can use this here to to add that image uh, where, where selected it can be quite useful I don't use personally use watermarks and then post-processing after it, the export you can open it in another in another uh, piece of software another application if you wanted to but I, I have that selected to do nothing and when that's all complete you can then uh, once you're happy and so normally I would just go this is the folder this is the file name this is the file type I want and this is how I want that that file type sized and then that's all I would do and then I would click export and you'll notice up in the top left corner here it's exporting the two files which is now done yeah so if I now go into my uh, files and go and have a look Jamie photography Rotterdam old old town 2 inside there you'll see let me show you that as a pull down old town 2 test there was the subfolder that I created and inside there we go Rotterdam old town day to night and Rotterdam old town day to night number two all right so it's literally put them in there um, and then I can use those now um, to to for, for my um, social media or for a, other outputs where a JPEG would be preferred in, in place of um, of a raw let me just go back to that now if 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 I've created another image for example here um, I've selected this image and then I I decide I want to uh, to add or create a virtual copy so I now have virtual copies of those um, what I could now do is say well now I want to out output these ones as well so you could because you want to put them in the same place you could right click go to export and then go to export with previous 
okay because it will do exactly what you did last time it sees 0 and 2 so you can choose to overwrite those ones that are already there which we just exported or you can click use unique names which is what I do and when I click that it will now export those two additional files and again if I go in if I go into uh, into here you'll find that it's created Rotterdam Old Town Day Tonight 3 and 4 so it's added those on automatically okay it's very it's very good for that so let me just show you the sizing issue I'm just going to select all four I'm going to right click go back into export we're going to go back in it's the same place in the same folder we're happy with that with the same name okay so we're not going to change that but this time we're going to limit the size uh, we're going to resize to fit megapixels and I want them to be five megapixels okay I'm going to select five megapixels they're quite small so I can use them as thumbnails okay I'm going to export those it's going to show me that there's already uh, one two three and four in there I don't want to overwrite them I want to use unique names okay so it's going to write those four as you can see up there it's just writing those four there again I'll go back into uh, I'll go back into here now you'll find that uh, five six seven and eight are the last four that it did and you will see that five six seven eight are 2.4 and 1.8 megabytes as opposed to 9.8 and 7.5 because it's gone for five megapixels and if I if I um, if I go back into Lightroom here go back into library and I select my Jamie photography I'm just going to resynchronize the folder because those new folders have been created and what it will do is it will resynchronize those bring in Rotterdam Old Town 2 there it is um, and then there's the test so I've selected an image and you can see that it's uh, 2685 by 1861 so let's just check that 2685 by 1861 5 megapixels there you go so uh, hopefully that's been uh, that's been useful um, if you liked it please click like love you to subscribe to my channel um, but either way thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video goodbye for now